Stalin, keep on the firing line. <coughs> Before I make my next statement, I'm going to say this. This is a hard position to be in sometimes. Spirit was moving, people feeling good, and things happening, you know, and like that. And then I got to say the things I got to say. You can't keep on the firing line if you ain't on the firing line. That's right. And I'm going to tell you something. Most of us ain't on the firing line. Most of us ain't been on the firing line. Most of us have no idea what it means to be on the firing line. We, we come to church and we do all the things that we do. That's not getting on the firing line. Coming to church and paying your tithes and saying your prayers, they're all good things. But that's not getting on the firing line. If you're going to get on the firing line, if you want to think about a war and you want to think about a battle and you're on the firing line, that means confrontation. That means you're going head to head. That means that, that you're going to have to uh, uh, take some blows and you're going to have to give some blows. And the thoughts that God are giving me this morning is that we need to understand what it means to be on the firing line. We need to understand what it means to be in the battle. We need to understand what it means to be a soldier for Christ. I don't think that we do. I don't think that we have gotten there yet. And I think that it's time that we get there. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And, and most of us, and I'm going to tell you, I've been saying it for a long time, and most of us are so concerned about the flesh, and so concerned about this life, and so concerned about our well-being and our comfort, and all this kind of stuff, that that's all that our minds can accept. But with, this thing is not in the flesh. This thing is in the spiritual. Hey, you can go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's where the battle is. That's where the battlefield is. That's where we have to fight. Uh, back to 2 Corinthians. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having a readiness, having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now listen, I want to make a few points, and I really want you to try to get this and try to understand it. Um, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, because our battle is not against flesh and blood. It is against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness and high places, and all those things that I read to you. And therefore, because of this, our weapons are not fleshly. Our weapons are not of our own making. Our weapons are not anything we can come up with. Our weapons are not anything that, that we can get a hold of and, and smack people with, or whatever the case may be. It says that our weapons are not carnal or fleshly, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. I've probably said this here before, but I'm going to ask you a question. When was the last time you pulled down a stronghold? We have individual strongholds. We have strongholds in our own life. There's people sitting here right now, this day, this hour, who have been dealing with things for a long, long time, and they know they are not to be doing that thing. They know they are not to be saying that thing. And they apologize for it. And they ask forgiveness for it. And they make a determination they're not going to do it anymore. And they do it again. That's a stronghold. It's got a hold on you. And you can't shake it. And you can't let it go. You know why? Because you are not using the weapons that you have been given. The weapons of our warfare are mighty to the tearing down of strongholds. And the only place you're going to have any victory is in any of this battle is when you get victory here first. And I'm telling you, and I don't know why, and I do know why, because God wants me to. There are those sitting here, you got to get some strongholds out of your life. 
Because you can't fight that battle till you win this battle. You can't conquer out there till you conquer here. If you can't overcome the strongholds in your own life, how are you going to overcome the strongholds that Satan has set up out there? The strongholds that are keeping your loved ones captive. The strongholds that are keeping my loved ones captive. The strongholds that are doing all those things that we talk about. All the evil things that are going on in the world. All the evil things that are going on in our community. How are we going to battle them when we can't win here? We got to get in the fight. You have got to fight. Be brave against all evil. Think of that song. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the fire line. But you can't keep on the fire line if you ain't on the fire line. First, you've got to get on the fire line before you can keep on the fire line. Listen. We, and I know I say this sort of thing a lot. We have been convinced over the years, all we ever have to do is come to church and pray. Come to church and pray. Come to church and pray. And things are going to happen. Well, I want to tell you what James said. If you see something going on and you pray and you don't do anything at all about it, your prayer is for naught. you got to take action. Come on. You pray because prayer is where you get your strength. Prayer is where you get uh, your guidance and your leadership. And God sends his messengers, his angels, to back you up. But they're not going to do anything until you do something. You have got to take action. They are sent to support you. They are sent to help you. They are sent to give you strength. But if you're just going to sit there, they're not going to go do it. You have got to step out. You have got to be willing to go. Just praying is not going to do it. That's where we battle. Hey, partially. That's where we get our equipment. That's where we get our direction. That's where we get our guidance. That's where we get our training. But then when you get up from there, you've got to go and put all that to use. You have got to confront evil. You have to look it right in the eye. You have got to walk right up to it and do something about it. That's being on the firing line. You have got to go into those places where it's uncomfortable to go. Say those things that it's uncomfortable to say. Confront those people that it's uncomfortable to confront. That's being on the firing line. It's easy for me to sit here and pray that when these folks go to the hill climb or any place else they go, that God will give them soul, the other soul. But what if they just sit here and pray and they don't go? The battle will never be won. You see what I'm saying? Before they go, I'm sure they pray. And they seek God's guidance and they seek God's help and they seek God's wisdom. They seek God's strength to go with them there. They don't just say, God, you go do it. God wants you to be the one on the battle line. You see what I'm saying? We can come in here and we can pray for our family, our lost loved ones, our children, and this one, and that one. But we have got to do something. We have got to get out there. We have got to get in the fight. He said that our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Now listen, I've got to go back to this, and I'm going to try to move on. you got to start here. And why this is so crucial, I, 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 well, that's between you and God. You know who you are. you got to get the strongholds out of your life first, or you're useless out there. If you can't conquer here, you're not going to conquer there. Listen, he said, the weapons of our warfare are mighty to the tearing down of stronghold. And then he goes on, and listen what he says after that. Casting down imaginations. You know what that means? That's not, you're, you're sitting and imagining things. That's not what it's talking about. Those things that are in your mind, those things that are in your head, that have built that stronghold in you, the things that you've allowed to come into your life and build up and build up and build up and become a stronghold. Those weapons that God will give you will cast those down. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that don't just mean thought. That means every action. 
bringing everything in your life into obedience for Christ. I'm going to say this one more time, I think, and then I'm going to move on. Whatever that thing is you're battling, whatever that thing is, it just keeps coming back on you that you don't want to do, you know you shouldn't do, and you keep trying to quit doing it, and you keep asking forgiveness for it. You have got to fight. 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 You have got to use the weapons that God has given you. I, I, this came up a while back in another sermon. And God's telling me to put it in here. You get this, and then we'll try to move on. Everything you do is a choice. Everything you do is a decision. When that thing starts to rear up, that's when you let the Holy Ghost lead. That's when you walk in the Spirit. That's when you live in the Spirit. How do I do that? You stop, and you just let the Holy Ghost make the decision, and you follow His direction. But we don't do that. We just go with the feeling. We just go with the flow, so to speak, and just go ahead and do those things. Whoever you are, whatever it is, uh, maybe more than one of you, uh, if you want to be victorious in this battle, if you want to be a good soldier, if you want to go out and tear strongholds down out there, you've got to start here. Now listen, over 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now listen, we'll put a couple things together here. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The weapons are our warfare. I, I read that because I want you to know and understand. Every Christian knows this, I'm sure. But I want to use the word and I want to make it clear. This is a warfare. We are in a war. It's not just something preachers say. It doesn't just sound good. The word says we are in a war. This is a warfare. Over here in Timothy 2 and 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You are a soldier. A soldier in a war. That's who you are. That's who we are. That's what we need to understand. That's how we need to begin to see ourselves. That's where we need to place our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our actions, our spirits needs to be there. We are soldiers in a war. And he goes on and says, No man of war entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now listen, I, I know you're probably tired of hearing me say these things, but it ain't about stuff. It ain't about this. It ain't about how I feel. It ain't about what I think. It's about this battle. I am a soldier for him. And Jake put it here and there. I am a bond servant. My will should be his will. My goal should be his goal. I should have no thought for me. No thought for myself. They should be all on him. And that's what he's saying here. If you get tangled up in this life, in the things of this life, what you think you want, what you think you need, what you think you have to have, what you think you have to do, if you get so tangled up in that stuff, you're not going to be a good soldier. And you're not going to be out there fighting. You're going to be so focused on everything else that you're no good in the battle. Now listen to me. We come and we pray and we seek prayer and we ask uh, people to pray and we do all these things and please try to understand where this is coming from and how I'm saying it. We pray about our finances and we pray about our health and we pray about our jobs and we pray about this and we pray about that. But Jesus, uh, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you if we will get our focus in the place our focus is supposed to be. And I don't know how many times I got to hear this. I don't know how many times you got to hear this before it thinks through our thick skull. If we would put him first. He would take care of all the rest of it. He promised that he would. And we know the scripture. And we quote the scripture. And we throw it at people who are having a problem. But we do not live it. How much of your time is spent thinking about how you're going to get out of this problem and that trial and this trouble and get money and get food and this at the job and that at the job and this with the family and that with the family. How much of your time is spent on that? Whereas, if we would do what he said we, that we should do, he would handle that. No man that worth entangles himself with the things of this life. You can't focus on this 
And I know, I know, I know it's hard. Believe me, I know it's hard. Somehow, you've got to get it in your mind. You've got to get it in your heart. It's got to be burned in that none of this matters anyway. I know that's easy to say. It's hard to live. I know it is. But through Christ, you can live that way. None of this matters. There's coming a time in the blink of an eye when it's all going to be passed away anyway. There's coming a time when it's all going to be destroyed. It's all going to be burned up. And when you stand before him one day, he's not going to ask you, did you get all your bills paid? He's not going to ask you, did you have a nice house? Did you have a nice car? Did you enjoy your vacation? Did you get enough sleep? Did you enjoy the football game? He ain't going to ask you all that. He's going to ask you, what have you done with what I gave you? That's what he's going to ask you. We've got to get our minds on the battle and all of the things of the flesh. And again, believe me, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But you've got to understand, if you just give it to God and do it and be that soldier, hey, he will take care of it. That's the word. I can guarantee it because that's the word. I end up getting lots of trouble. Listen, how many times do we come in here, and even when we talk about the goodness of God and the love of God, and all the great things of God. How do we measure it? Stuff. Stuff. He will give you this. He will give you that. All those things we say he will give us, what are they? Material things. How many times do we come in here and, and we say, what we say, now listen, and don't, I'm not saying he doesn't, but what we say is if, if you're dedicated to him and you're living for him and you're a Christian, He'll give you shelter. He'll give you food. He'll give you these things. And he does. But how many times do we come in and we say, if you're a good Christian and you're living for him, he'll give you peace. He'll give you joy. He'll give you hope. He'll give you love. We don't say that. Why? Because we're focused on the material. Our minds are on the material. Our minds are not on the spiritual. For we need to get in the spiritual to fight the battle because the battle is in the spiritual. We can't fight a spiritual battle with material things. We can't fight a spiritual battle with fleshly things. And I'm going to say this. The majority of us are so caught up in the fleshly things. We have yet to get on that firing line. We are soldiers. If we're born again, we are soldiers. But a lot of us are laying back there in the infirmary. A lot of us are back there at the supply depot begging for more supplies. A lot of us are on R&R &R somewhere. A lot of us are off doing things we ain't spent. A lot of us are AWOL. And a lot of us just have sat down and don't give a hoot anymore. There might even be a couple cleaners who are trying to pretend like there's something wrong with you so you can get out of it. How many of us have stood up and said, well, I can't do that. I'm not able to do that. I don't have the talent. I don't have the ability. That's no different than cleaner just trying to get out of it. Whatever you got to do, whatever you got to say to get out of it. That's what we do. If you're a true soldier of Jesus Christ, you want to please him. Listen, it says, No man no worth entangling himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. If you're truly going to be that soldier, you want to please him. If you want to please him, you're going to be that one that when he says, I need a couple volunteers, you're up on your feet and you're standing there and say, Here am I, send me. But most of us are sent back and saying, I can't do that. I'm not able to do that. If somebody else should do that. We gotta get the, our, our focus right. We gotta get our minds right. We've got to get ourselves in the right place in order to fight this battle, in order to be that soldier, in order to go out there and to fight this thing that's going on, in order to tear down the stronghold. Now we've got to begin here. We've got to get it right in here before we can do anything out there. I know that I've said this a lot, these kind of things, but we need to understand. I truly believe these are the last things. And I believe that Satan is just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And there's got to be somebody who can stand up. There's got to be somebody who can fight the battle. Somebody who's going to be on the front line. Listen, 
I'm fascinated by the Civil War, and I read a lot and study a lot of that, and I really get into it. I want you to think about this. In the Civil War, uh, the different units, the different regiments, they all had their own battle flag. Uh, they called it their colors. Well, I'm going to tell you something. This is our colors. This is our color. And you know, it wasn't just a piece of cloth on a stick. Everything they believed in, everything they had hope in, everything that they were fighting for, was uh, that was a symbol of it. That was an emblem of it. And I'm going to tell you something. Men would die to protect that flag, to keep the enemy from getting that flag. They would lay down their lives. If the one who was carrying it were cut down, they, they'd be quick for somebody else to pick it up and go on with it. And when they were in the battle, wherever that went, that's where the regiment went. Wherever it would go, they would go. They would take that and they would plant the color, so to speak. And 